Hey, I'm Greg Seiler. Uh, I own Seiler Benefit Services. Joel Starkey's here with me. He's another one of our main guys. Um, and we are a full service employee benefits uh, brokerage. And what that means is we come into companies and we put the full benefits package in. And I really think it was great that Cindy spoke before me because a lot of the things that she's talking about in employee retention and attraction is really a lot of what we do as well. So you're gonna to try to hire people and you're gonna go through this process and she's, she's dead on in everything she just said. You have to go through a really good process. Those of us with little gray hair understand that. Uh, but when they come down to the benefits package and everything else, you want them to, you want a benefits package of some kind, not just time off or salary, I'm gonna pay you X, so you're gonna be happy with that. You want an actual benefits package. And then when that's communicated, you want that done in a way that increases the return on investment that you're gonna be spending as an employer on these things too. So, but what I'm gonna be talking to you today is about something called Encompass. And Encompass is a new way that we've created at Siler Benefit to communicate benefits to employees so that we're helping employers increase that, uh, increase that return on investment. It's a workplace benefits program that says we care. There we go. I like the turn page, the page turn like that. All right, so a workplace benefit program that says we care. Uh, why should I care if employees feel like we care about them? All right, we're talking about engaged employees. We're trying to create an employee that, uh, let me just kind of take you back to a couple years ago at a Christmas party. I had my staff there and I've got a few people that have been there for a long time. And we just handed out the Christmas bonuses, you know, privately to a couple of the staffers and things like that. And um, what happened really surprised us. It was, it was at our house, so the people were having a little bit of fun. So of course, they had drank a little bit of wine. And uh, it uh, lowered a few inhibitions, I think. But it, my wife found one, that one staffer out in the entryway of our house, and she was just crying. And Chris is like, what's wrong? And my wife, Kristen, she says, what's wrong? What's wrong? What? And she says, oh, I'm just so happy to have found you seven years ago. You know, that we, I love where, what I do. I love working with you. You guys are great. And that's what every employer should be working towards. That kind of hit me. You know, it's kind of like, you know what? That's the kind of employee I know that's going to go the extra mile. Right, Cindy, wouldn't you agree? That employee, and we were lucky to find her. Uh, she was a good referral from someone else that's another friend, so that's a great place to find candidates too. But that is exactly what every employer should be looking for. I know that employee is 100% engaged, and they're engaged in helping us build our company and grow our company. So your goal is to have engaged employees. So engaged employees, and we work with a lot of small businesses. Our target market is two to 100 employees, really. We love that market. We love working with business owners that are bootstrapping it and putting this thing together and then growing. And what we're trying to do is help you uh, turbocharge those employees, basically, and get you uh, to grow even faster. But most small businesses we work with are trying to do more with less. Oftentimes, money is tight. So getting as much as you can from every dollar is extremely important. Does everybody here kind of own a business, small business? Am I, am, I, am I far off when I say that? No, we're all trying to do more with less. We don't have a bunch of staff sitting around uh, twiddling their thumbs. We want everybody employed. Workplace Research Foundation gives us statistics. Engaged employees are 38% more likely to have high above average productivity. Nice and simple. Employee retention is huge. This cost uh, is a huge and costly issue replacing an employee who understands your systems, your customers, and is aligned with your company values, which I think is a huge issue. Uh, goals is estimated to cost up to 200 to 300 times that person's salary. She said retention is uh, out of one out of every four employees you hire uh, is going to be leaving. The retention is extremely expensive. It might, you might just think it's the salary, but it's not. It's searching for that employee. And then when you get that employee, teaching them your system, because every company is different. We all use different systems. We all use different programs. And then once that customer or that employee builds a relationship with that customer, which is making you money, that relationship is invaluable. You, can't, you just can't replace that. So, uh, engaged employees are 59% less likely to look for a different job in the next 12 months. And that's right from Gallup. 
Finding good employees is also a challenge, especially in an unemployment market when unemployment is low. I'm not even sure what the unemployment market is right now. Uh, I hear low percentages, I hear high percentages and you know, con you know, uh, conflicting information on that. But I know engaged employees are five times more likely to recommend a position to another friend or relative that might be in the same category as they are. Also probably a likelihood for an engaged employee. Think of manufacturing right now. Manufacturing firms that we work with can't find enough people to work in their industries. So if we can find good people that won't uh, cost us a lot in, in bad production and things, we really, really want to value them. So that's really important. Engaged employees. When you're a small business, and when you're when you're a small business in growth mode, all customers count. Is that right? Am I wrong? I know that's make that's why we are. Engaged employees are known to yield an average of 18% higher customer retention rates. Okay, so your goal as an employer should be to be creating that engaged employee uh, culture. Let's just say culture, something like that. This is just a picture of us. Uh, I'm a, a big supporter of Right Care. Uh, which is uh, uh, a program that helps kids with uh, speech impediments and, and, and dis difficulties there. Um, and we took the part of the team out for the Right Care Gala. Didn't cost me a whole lot of money, but the team had a great time building, and that was a, that was a good team building experience. So we start to build that relationship with the whole office. So we know employees who feel valued at their company are going to work harder for you. And where did this all come from? And, and, and maybe, I'm, maybe I'm just hitting on a bunch of stuff that seems kind, you know, that everybody knows this. You know, this is just makes, seems like common sense. But I gotta tell you, I've been doing this for 25 years. I meet all kinds of different employers. And employers seem to think one way. They can't figure out why their employees don't give as much as they do into their job, okay? They'll put 110%, they'll work weekends, they'll work long hours, but they just can't figure out why the employees don't do that. And that's because I've just come down, we're wired differently. So you as the employer have to be really smart about this and take a look in the mirror and look back at yourself, okay, what am I doing uh, differently and why aren't my employees engaging? Because it might, you know, might be me. You know, my sister or my wife's my wife's aunt was married five times, and after the third one, I said, "Linda, it might be you." <laughs> she she didn't like that, but she's she's divorced again. Anyway, uh, <laughs> looking for number six, Mayo Clinic research. This came out in uh, uh, 2009, eight, something like that, and a good friend of mine at uh, Preferred One. Who was doing? Or no, he's actually he was at he's at preferred one. He was at the Mayo Clinic, and Mayo Clinic has a third party re, uh, uh, company that does self funding business. But anyway, Mayo Clinic does a lot of research. They were doing some research into health and wellness programs for health plans to see if an employer spent a dollar on it, what was the return on investment? And he was trying to convince me this is a good thing, and I'm I'm not really still not interested. And in I think it's a cultural issue and not an insurance company issue. But one thing that I highlighted in the re report for him is that the Mayo Clinic found that employers are losing two to three times the cost of their benefits plan, uh, prescrip you know, prescriptions, pharmacy, everything included in that, two to three times that on absenteeism and presenteeism. Okay? And if you, look in, if you dig in and do the research, that actually averages employers three to four billion dollars over a year is what companies are losing on this. Absenteeism and presenteeism is costing employers two to three times total cost of your medical plan. And what we mean by that is, we don't mean absenteeism that an employee is sick and absent from work. What, we mean, what they found is that employees are dealing with life's distractions. Therefore, they have to take a day off or they have to leave. They have to deal with something with the kids. They got to deal with an elderly parent. They got to deal uh, with a spouse or whatever it is. Presenteeism, presenteeism is they're at work, but they're not focused. Does that make sense? So when I, went, when I started this research back in 2009, I'd ask employers, hire a new employee, you're all excited, right? What do you expect out of an employee? I expect 110% out of them. Six months later, what do you get? They all shake their head. 60%, 50% is what they, what they feel like they're getting. Something changed. Nothing really changed. All that happened is that uh, the employee showed themselves really good in an interview, and then life caught up. You know, we settle in, we get going and thing. So we created this meme on our brochure, and it's back there, you can take one with you. 
But this beam is, she's looking at the chalkboard. This is life. This is everything that's going on in her life. And she's trying to figure out how to manage it all. I'm finally moving through the phase where my kids are little. Joel's still got little ones at home. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of, that's a lot of things we've got to balance in life. When it comes to piano recitals, when it comes to soccer games, oh, the soccer games can never end, uh, you know, and things like that. So it's balance. It's work-life balance is what she's trying to figure out. So we also step back and we asked ourselves, why do employees work? Now, feel free to argue with me on any of these, but I kind of came down, or the team kind of came down to five things. First one is retirement dreams. We work because we don't want to work someday, or maybe we want to switch gears, okay? The second one, insurance coverage. A lot of us work for insurance benefits. Benefits are cheaper through employers. We can get tax benefits uh, through those as well. The third one is personal growth. I identify as a benefits consultant. Uh, Joel does the same thing. I've got people that really, when you do all those disc tests and things like that, they identify really well with a person in a support role. They enjoy that. So we're all wired a little bit differently. So that's that Maslow's hierarchy of needs or whatever. You get into that. The personal growth also is income because we've got to fund our lifestyles of what makes us happy. Okay. The other thing is benefits. There's other perks and benefits that come along with that. Might be able to buy life insurance cheaper through my, you know, uh, a group voluntary benefits program, disability, or whatever it is. Some things like that. But the one thing I was missing back in 2009 was, is the bottom one. And I put that on the bottom kind of as a foundational piece. Work-life balance. For 25 years I've been doing this and I meet with employers and I, and I talk about, I, I look at their benefits plan and I see it's just junk. I mean, they really don't have a qualified plan or you know, a quality plan put together. And, but they've got employees that will stick around forever. And you know why? I found out why. They treat them like family. Or they give them a lot of work-life balance uh, uh, allowances that allow them to be able to do everything else they got to do. Maybe they get their benefits then from the spouse at their other employer or something like that. But the work-life balance is a real key thing. So why do we work? Encompass, and I, I forgot to talk about this, but the, the, the gray in the middle with Encompass on the meme is supposed to represent the, represent the employee. But the white ring, this wasn't intentional, it just kind of worked out that way. The white ring is the corporate culture, okay? So you provide all the benefits. The white ring is the corporate culture, which is kind of the glue that holds the whole thing together. And that is the perception of how the employee feels about the company. And as an employer, when I say you got to look in the mirror, you got to look in the mirror and say, okay, am I, pre am I presenting what I want my employees to want? So it's a holistic benefits program that helps them across those five categories. We do a thoughtful four-step process we implement. By the way, this is free. This whole program is free. This is just a different way now that we communicate our benefit packages with our companies. And we're slowly moving ex existing clients over to Encompass. Uh, and because our, we're having a lot of fun with it, to be honest. Really having a lot of fun with it. Because we're helping employers intentionally put benefit programs in place and explain those things. So, number one, we've always done this, build an understanding of what the employer's goals are. What's the employer's goals? We're going to fill those. But the second one has been the hardest one over these years, but once you fig put it back into a compass, it makes a lot of sense. We build an understanding of your employee's goals, and we do that through the Encompass Employee Survey. It's anonymous. We send it out to your employees. It's 43 questions. It's actually the SHRM Employee Engagement Survey. And then we add a few things other in a la carte, depending on what client, what they want to do on it. But we send that out. That survey asks about how well do you interact with your employer? Does your employer recognize and reward you when you do a good job? Do you like your other employees? Do you, are you satisfied with your benefits? Do you feel you're compensated fairly? And just a whole slew of things. When we do that survey then, and it's done anonymously again, and we send it out to them, we come back and we put this in front of the employer, and I've had employers say, I don't know if I want to know the answer to these things. <laughs> All right? Uh, and I've, the, so if we're building this program, I've got a couple existing clients that I'm kind of like, you know, Scott. Um, I'll tell this story. Scott uh, 
really successful manufacturing company uh, over on the east side and sat down, showed him this process that we wanted to go through. He's, he, and he's a big stoic guy, always wearing you know, a plaid flannel. He looks like he should be a great guy, should, like he should be right out of the Hams commercial fishing, you know, along the, along the shore of the river. And he, but he doesn't talk much, big guy, does not talk much. He's kind of stoic and uncomfortable silent happens. <laughs> like we convince him, I said, Scott, you know, you don't turn a ship on a dime. And I know you're doing things right here, otherwise you wouldn't be successful and your turnover wouldn't be as low, but I want to use you as kind of a guinea pig on our process we're trying to go through here. He says, okay. Again, I don't know if I want to know the answers to these, he says. We go through the survey, it comes back really, really good for him. But the one thing was communication. He did, there was bad communication from senior, senior level employee, uh, owners down to employees. And I put that survey in front of him, we walked through it, things are going well. Um, we get to that communication piece. And I'm talking, I, so you're, you're on a scale of one to five years, Scott, you're at a two on this communication piece. What do you think it is? And it's real uncomfortable silence again. He doesn't say a word and he just keeps looking at it. And he said, you know what? <laughs> he, says, he says, I know I'm a bad communicator. So I don't know why I gave you that idea, Scott. <laughs> I didn't say that. But uh, uh, he goes, we, I'm a bad communicator uh, and we do pizza parties for the guys when they hit certain safety goals and other goals. And we've been doing two a month for the last three months. Quiet again. Says, I don't think we've ever told them why we're doing the pizza parties. Isn't that funny? I like, that's a really, it, the, the survey does so much. And what it does is gives you a roadmap as an employer on how to build your company with employees and make them happy. And happy employees are what? More productive? I mean, it's just kind of common sense, but it, somehow, you, somehow you, you gotta just figure out a way to measure everything. So we do that. So again, a thoughtful four-step process. Once we get that survey done, we've got a benchmark. I'm gonna back that up. We've got a benchmark, so our goal with all our Encompass companies is to do that survey once a year in June, around June, because we roll around December and January, our busy times right now, it's been crazy lately. But then we can come into the renewal and say, all right, this is what your employees are saying. As of June, what can we do to make change, you know, and a positive change in your company? And then we'll help communicate it when we do the benefits package. So we create a, ben, uh, create a benefits plan around that, and then we implement and monitor it with the Encompass survey annually. Implement uh, the plan and monitor its progress. So most important, we help employees recognize the value of those benefits. That same company, we came back and walked them through our, uh, our new uh, structure for uh, communication on employee benefits. They have very low turnover. It's the same guys I've been working with for 15 years. We've had them there for that long. That's why I was a perfect candidate for work with us. No changes. We brought in uh, Colonial, one of our partner companies, Colonial Voluntary Benefits, to come in and do the benefits, and they meet with the employees one-on-one. -on -one. They roll them. Uh, two, week later, two weeks later, I got uh, the enrollment information. And not that we made more money selling these benefits, but what happened was, and I've got I've to peg it back to this, employees understood why those benefits were in place. It tripled the voluntary benefits that were sold through a Colonial. It was kind of amazing, I was shocked by it. And now we're, now we're trying to track and make sure that that's what it is. But we, we put in a benefits plan in and we've hired writers to rewrite our, uh, our benefits uh, at a glance program and everything else we give employees to explain it in their terms. So the, our goal is to show that these benefits are intentional and not by chance. Does that make sense? We're trying to make sure that the value is there. And that's done you know, through our communication pieces. So it's gonna hopefully produce higher productivity, employee retention, customer retention, higher profits, all that kind of stuff we want, right? All right, so back to the meme. Two to three times lost due to absenteeism, presenteeism. We're trying to put the light bulbs on for her. Does that make sense? Where I get excited about this stuff because it's just common sense, but it just makes so much sense when you finally put it in action. 
All right, fact. Increasing employee engagement investments by 10% can increase profits per employee by $2,400 per year. I think that is an incredibly low number if you actually do it, if you do everything we're talking about here. That's a minimum. I think that's a minimum number. I think it'd actually be about three times that, depending on what you do. Just, I mean, just retention alone. Just retention alone. If you can retain two employees more, think of the salaries. That's $60,000 right there. Or 80 or whatever it is. So support your employees need. Encompass is all about engaging employees. But more importantly, we're allowing them to be more productive by taking some of this stuff or offering them stuff or taking care of some of the worries. An EAP program inside of a benefits program might not mean a whole lot to anybody, but what it means to a spouse that's being abused by the other spouse is they've got somebody to call and it's not gonna cost them a whole lot. And they can start to figure out what they're gonna do with it. So that's, that's, one, that's one of the things I would include. And then I would communicate that to the employees that that's why that's there. And hope to God nobody ever has to use it for that. Engaged employees. With a fully supported benefits program, your employees are free to focus on making great things happen for themselves and your company. So we offer them, again, it's free of charge. This whole Encompass thing is free. What we tell clients is that, especially new prospective clients, let's do the survey for you. Let's see if this makes a little bit of sense for you. We'll move forward and you can kind of see how we work. And then we start to structure things off of that. Uh, join the conversation. We've got a great Siler Benefit uh, website. We also have Facebook, and the Facebook has got our two uh, mascots, Wilson and Butter, which are English Bulldogs that are one of our staff. Uh, Chris, I always tease Christine. She doesn't get out of the house a lot, but she's got these Bulldogs. They're really cute, and uh, she dresses them up. She was a photographer. <laughs> she dresses them up and takes pictures of them so that we put memes on them. And if you'll see more on Facebook, they're really, they're really kind of funny, aren't they, Joel? All right, so there it is. There's our contact information. Feel free to contact. Anybody got any questions about that, about this proposal? Anything? No? Excellent. Thank you. Oh, maybe one. Yes. I'm sorry, what'd you say? The survey. The survey, yes. Uh, we can get you a copy. You give me your card, I'll get you a copy. Thank you. Thank you.